Father, you're worthy to be praised and lifted up and glorified. You're an awesome God. We thank you for waking us up. Thank you for the activities of our limbs. Thank you, Almighty God, for keeping us all week long. Thank you for keeping us to see the last year, of two, the last Sunday of 2015. We count it a joy, a privilege. But we come before you now interceding on, on behalf of each other. We call our brother, our sister's name out to you. We ask you to step into the domain of their life. Work a miracle for them, God. Whatever the need, whatever the drama, the pain, the uncertainty that they may be facing. We ask you in Jesus' incredible and mighty name for you, almighty God, to work it out in Jesus' name. Please rebuke the hand of the enemy. We welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into our lives that you can do whatever it is you want to do. Save somebody that needs to be saved is my prayer. We claim somebody who's drifted away, Father, away from you bring restoration to them. I pray for the person who's not sure of their eternal destiny, that they might come and get blessed assurance. God, I pray for the unchurched and the uncommitted and the unserving and the, this, those people, God, who those individuals who need your hand in their life, I pray that you edify the saints, strengthen them on every side. I pray for the internet and television and radio participants, God, that you would speak to them in the most profound way, transcend location speak to them in a powerful way. Now, God, I, I yield myself. Use me however you see fit. And let your name get the glory, the honor, and the credit for it all. It's in Jesus' incredible and mighty name that we pray. And everybody said amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and hug somebody one last time. One last time. Give something to say. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I am sure that there are some people in this service today who do not wish to enter into 2016 with the same drama and baggage that you had in 2015. I feel inclined and led of God today to talk with you about lessons that we can learn from a gentleman in the Bible named Isaac. Anybody who know anything about the Bible? I know you do, but you might, you might need to tell the person next to you who Isaac is. Isaac is the son of Abraham. He is the son that would be the lineage of Jesus and David, and he would be the one, he would be the one that uh, would be the lineage of all of those. But Isaac learned some valuable lessons in the course of his journey that I think are beneficial and applicable to our lives today. And that's what I want to talk about. I only got two points. Somebody say, two points, that's all, Pastor? Just two. By the way, I want to extend my condolences to Deacon Rhines and, the, um, and all the other cowboy fans here. You're deceived, Deacon Rhines. You're in a state of delusion. The Cowboys are in last place. The Redskins are in first place. I wasn't going to say nothing, but when you walked up in here with that Dallas Cowboy shirt on, I had to say something about it. Okay, let me get back to the assignment that I have at hand. But I couldn't, I couldn't preach the sermon unless I, because that's just staying in my face. And I had to say something about it. I had to extend my condolences. Now I can go on with the message that God has given me to say, all right? What was I saying? Something profound. <laughs> Two points. Isaac teaches us some lessons. And I want to 
I know they read this already, but it's from, it is from this 26th chapter of Genesis that Isaac... That's funny right there. <laughs> no, I just thought I should tell you because I don't know if you saw the game last night, uh, Dick and Ryan, so. I didn't think. <laughs> I'm proud of you, young man. So what's, I'm, I'm trying to say something for a friend. Yeah, Genesis 26. Isaiah gives us two lessons to learn about life. Isaac, who, who do I say? I'm all out of control here. I'm just... Y'all sing a song trying to get myself together here. Sing something, really, seriously. Come sing something. I have, my mind is just gone crazy. And just... Yeah, sing, I don't care, just sing anything. Get myself together here. Cow! 
Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel better. All right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all so much. Y'all got me back into the, the spiritual frame of mind now. One of the things I've tried to do in my life is teach people, this is what my life is about, teaching people that life is full of principles. And once you learn those principles, your life can move forward. If you don't learn those principles, you'll keep repeating the same experiences until you learn what God wants you to learn. Amen. And it's difficult for people to understand that and get a hold of that. People get bitter, mad, angry because life doesn't go the way they want. And the reason it's not going the way you want is because you have not learned the lessons that God is trying to teach you to learn. So for the next few moments, for the next two, hour, two and a half hours, I want to try to teach you all of the principles. I want to teach you these two principles in life that, that make the difference. Matter of fact, they're the two that I believe God told me to talk to you about as you enter into 2016. They become critical. And they are demonstrated in the life of Isaac. Here's, a, here's a, a young man who finds himself going through a series of experiences and challenges in life. And he responds to them in a particular way. And the way he responds determines the outcome of his life. And some of you are not able to recognize and understand that your response to, the, to your, your, your life experiences will determine where you, where you will end up. In, in chapter 26 of Genesis, verse 12 gives us the first principle that Isaac learned that most people have not learned. Here it is right here, verse 12 of, Isaiah, of Genesis 26. I'll get it together. If I say Isaiah, y'all know I mean Isaac. Then Isaac, verse 12, sold. Somebody say he sold. There's a very first point right there that, that life if you want to reap a harvest in your life, you have to learn to sow. I know that's a cuss word for this generation because we live in the, in the day and age where people want to reap a harvest where they have not sown. We want rewards and we haven't picked up the responsibilities. We want a paycheck, but we haven't been to work. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. My daughter, my oldest daughter, Sarah, when she was a little kid, she wanted me to buy something from her from the store. And um, I said, Sarah, I'm sorry, I can't get it. Daddy don't have the money. She said, Daddy, all you have to do is go to the ATM. <laughs> she didn't understand that in order to make a withdrawal from the ATM, you have to, first of all, make a deposit. And we live in a culture of people who want, they want the withdrawal, they want the benefits, but they don't want to make a deposit. Yeah, they, 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 they want the money, but they don't want to go to work. Y'all getting lower and lower and lower in the amens. You got to learn to sow. Sowing is a principle of the Bible. It's a principle of life. As a matter of fact, let me read this to you right here, verse 12. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Y'all see that, verse 12? Then verse 13, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. I like all those Ps. He began to prosper, continued prospering until he became very prosperous. If you're not prosperous and if you're not prospering, it's because you're not sowing. You got to sow. You got to sow. Somebody tell your neighbor, you have to sow. Tell them on the other side, you have to sow. It is an order of life. It is a way of life. It is a prerequisite for having a harvest. You cannot expect a harvest if you haven't sown. And the question is, what are you sowing today? Because you're going to get what you sow. You reap what you sow. We, our, our culture wants, you know, let me back up. No farmer goes out to the field and looks for a harvest knowing he has not sown any seeds. That would be crazy for him to be going out there looking for corn and he ain't planted no corn. But, but that, what do you do? You going out to your mailbox looking for an unexpected check, but you ain't sent nobody an unexpected check. That's a problem. Somebody say that is a problem. 
he sold. Now what's unique about the fact that he sold? It, what's unique about the fact that he sold is that he sold, look at verse number 12, he sold in that land. He sold where he was. He sold in the land where he was. Why is that significant? It is significant because he was in a land during a time when there was a famine. People were struggling financially and yet even though everybody was struggling, even he, he found enough of his own resources to say, I'm not going to eat up all of the seed on myself. I'm going to take a portion and put it aside and sow it. That's why some of you can never get ahead today because you are consuming everything on yourself. You got to be smart. You know why I'm a prosperous guy? Go ahead, say, Pastor, you a prosperous dude. Don't I look good? I look fine. I'm walking fine, living good. You know why? Because I've learned some principles. It has nothing to do with the amount of money that I make. That has nothing to do with it. I'm living a blessed kind of life. You, you, can, you, can, have, you can have a blessed life and have God prosper you and not make a whole lot of money. I wish I had somebody who said amen. Because it's a lifestyle of sowing that God rewards. This man sold, and what's amazing about Isaac is that he sold during a famine when people were struggling and didn't have money and, and, and all of that, he sold. And, and yet, you and I have to learn that no matter what we get, we need to take a portion of what God gives us and sow it. We can't consume it all on ourselves. So most, most people consume every dollar on themselves. I'm a blessed man because I learned the secret of life that I've learned to sow and not consume everything on me. Mm, okay, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to help y'all. It's, it's a way of life. It's a pattern of life that I learned. I'm reaping today from the, from the seeds I've sown several months ago. See, see this, is where, this is where we mess up. We sow on Monday and expect the harvest on Tuesday. And they get mad if nothing ain't, ain't come out by Wednesday. When you plant a seed, you put it in the dirt. Don't see it no more. You, you can't keep tracking it. Keep look, you don't keep coming up, digging it, un, digging it about the ground. No, you plant it, forget about it. Walk away, let the seed die, let it germinate, Come back in a few weeks and then you'll see something sprout up out the ground. I'm living the life that I've learned how important it is to sow. I'm looking for opportunities to sow. I'm looking for opportunities to give. I'm looking for opportunities to put something back into the ground because I know that in due season I shall reap if I faint not. Woo. I am preaching better than y'all are saying amen. Now, I see some women getting nervous. I saw somebody grab their purse and hold on to their purse and stuff right here. I'm not going to take up another offering today. This is, I'm, not, I'm not after taking up another offering. That's not what I'm about. I'm not going to do that. What I'm trying to do is instill in your hearts and mind a lifestyle. So I'm, I'm, I'm sowing and I'm reaping today the seed that I've sown a few months ago and I'm gonna reap tomorrow seeds that I sown a few months before that. It's a lifestyle, so I've learned to make it a lifestyle that I'm giving all the time so I can stay in a perpetual place of prosperity. Now I, hear, I know it's tension in the room, it's tight, y'all getting quiet. I thought everybody would jump up and shout, run around. I thought everybody would run up here and drop some money up here. I thought y'all would get excited. I know why you're not, because you're saying you ain't got the money. If money is that tight for you, you can't afford not to sow. If money is that tight for you, you're the very ones that need to give your way out of the rut that you're in. And the only way you can have a harvest is you gotta plant some seeds. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me. Somebody holler back. Say, preach, pastor. Whew, man, y'all gonna make this tough and harder than I thought it was gonna be. This is the truth of the word of God. Now, now, um, people look for reasons not to sow when the reality is this is a universal truth. It is a way of life. You can't afford not to. And by the way, while I'm on this point, by the way, tithing is not sowing. <laughs> tithing, according to Leviticus, is you giving that which is holy back to who it belongs to. 
The tithe belongs to God. Tell your neighbor, the tithe belongs to God. Tell them, tell them to their face. Somebody look straight ahead. They didn't look to their left. Go ahead, grab them by their jaws and put their face over here and say, the tithe is God. You haven't given anything if you just give back to God what's already his. Your tithing does not begin until you give above your, your sowing does not begin, your giving does not begin until you give above your tithe. And so I, I love Isaac because he sowed in a place of famine. Somebody say, in a place of famine. He sold in a place of famine. Now here's the other thing I need to say. Sowing is not just about money. There are, other, there are other ways to sow. You sow your time, your talent, and your treasures. You look for, there's a multiplicity of ways. Matter of fact, here's what, here's what Galatians 6 says. I, I don't, you don't have to turn there, just make a note of it. Galatians 6 Seven, eight, and verse seven, eight, and nine says, "Do not be, de do not be deceived. Listen to this: God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So you're going to get whatever you sow. That's what you're going to get." Verse eight: For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So if you sow anger, you're going to get anger back. If you sow hatred, you're going to get hatred back. You sow love, you're going to get love back. You sow kindness, you're going to get kindness back. It happens in all of life. It is a way of life. I learned this in marriage. And whatever I get in my wife, my wife's going to give it, is going to take it. Because my, my wife is, a, women are receivers. They're, they're designed to be receivers. Everything about them is a receiver. And whatever you give them, they're going to take it and multiply to give it back. You give them hatred, they're going to get hatred back to you. You call them a name, they're going to call you names you never heard of before. You give them love, they're going to give you love back. My wife is, a, is just a marvelous example of this. I gave her love, she gives me love back. I gave her a house, she gave me a home. Amen. I gave her groceries. Most of the time, she gives me a meal. I gave her a seed, she gave me six children. Do you understand what I'm saying? She takes what's given and multiplies and gives it back. It's a way of life. So, so I mean, hey, you know, she, my wife is a mirror of me. When, when I see how she's doing, I see how I'm doing. I see what I'm giving to God. I see what I'm giving to her. It is a way of life. So I, what I'm challenging you on today is to evaluate what you're sowing. Evaluate what you're giving to other people. You, you resisting your boss, you're going to get it back. You, you talk about people, they're going to talk about you. Y'all ain't got nothing to say to me. You cuss folk out, you think worse about them, you're going to get it back that way. All I'm trying to tell you is start evaluating what you are sowing because you're going to get back whatever it is you sow. Isaac sowed and God prospered him. I love this passage. He sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year. A hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And God wants to do th the same thing for you. And, and here's what verse number 14 says, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. He, the man had it going on in a place where there was famine. You know what is awesome about God, about God? Why everybody else is losing their jobs and losing their money, God can bless you in the midst of all of that. Can I get an amen right there from somebody? It is, the, it is the way of life. Our church is a sowing church. Our church sows. Every month we give out and pour into ministries and organizations around the world. We are giving and giving and giving. Above and beyond, up, above and beyond the 10% that we sow as a church, we, we go above and beyond. We don't stop at the tithes of our church. We give beyond that. That's why we are a blessed church. Why everybody else is struggling, we're doing pretty good right now. We're doing well. Why? Because we have incorporated that principle into our life and into the structure and organization of our church. We are a giving church. And I'm trying to teach you what we're doing in our personal life and the life of our church to help you become what God wants you to be. Some of you ain't so, has, have never sown anything. And that's why you're struggling all the time. You got a plan. So he, the man is so prosperous, but here's point two. Number one, you got to be a sower. Here's point two. Isaac learned how to overcome obstacles. 
Now this is important because I promise you in life you're going to have obstacles. I promise you you're going to have people who don't like you and they're going to hate you. Matter of fact, that's what happened to Isaac. Uh, here's what the verse says right here in verse number 14 that he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and the great number of servants. And then the last part of verse 14 says, so the Philistines envied him. Somebody say the Philistines envied him. See, when, when, listen, what I'm, here's what I'm trying to do. Let me, let me just tell you all up front what my goal is. My goal is to get you in a place of prosperity. That's why I'm telling you to sow. But I'm also going to tell you, I'm trying to prepare you for what's going to happen when God prospers you. And what's going to happen when God prospers you is people are going to start getting jealous of you. They're going, to, they're going to start not liking you. They're going to start being jealous of what you have. And the reason they're jealous of you is because they don't understand how you got what you're going to get. They don't understand it. And, and because they don't understand it, and the reason they don't understand it is because they feel that they're more qualified than you. See, that's why Deacon Rhines is all messed up because he thinks the Cowboys are more qualified than the Redskins. This is not a question of who's the most qualified. I'm not the most qualified person to be your pastor, but I got the job right now. And you know why I got the job right now? It's because I'm practicing practices and putting things in place in my life and working the principles in my life. I'm walking in humility and I'm walking under the grace of God. And when you walk with humility and under the grace of God, no weapon formed against you can prosper. And no devil in hell can stop you from getting what God has for you. And there's some people up in here today, God wants to do something for you, but you've got to be prepared. Somebody say, you've got to be prepared. They envy, they were envious. The Philistines was envious of, of Isaac. Y'all need to be prepared. People are going to be jealous of you. They want what you have. Here's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Never be jealous of what somebody else has. Don't want their wife. Don't want their husband. Don't want their children. Don't want their house. Don't want their kids. Don't want your money. Just get what God has for you. He's got enough with your name on it. But they got envious. They wanted what he had. They were envious. They were jealous of him. So you got to be prepared. I wonder, can you handle being can you handle being blessed? Can you handle being talked about? Can you handle, they, they, they envied him, verse number 14. Verse 15 says, now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father and they had filled them with earth. So they got so jealous with him that they went down and filled up his wells with dirt. And Abimelech said to Isaac, verse 16, go away from us for you are much mightier than we. In other words, we can't handle you being here. Leave. Verse 17, Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. Y'all see that? Verse 18, And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Verse 19, Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. Now they done stopped up all these wells and Isaac goes and keeps digging the water, digging the dirt up out of it. Then they finally find a well that's got some water in it. Verse 20, but the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen saying, the water is ours. How, how water from the earth going to be yours? So he called the name of the well Esek because they quarreled with him. Listen, follow me. I'm almost finished here. Verse 21. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So he called his name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called his name Rehoboth because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Who I like that right there. What are you trying to say? Oh my gosh, I love this man. I love his attitude. I love his spirit. I love his heart. Because every place he went, they kept following him. And they kept taking what he had. And he kept going to the next place. And he kept going to the next place. And he kept going to the next place. But there reached a point in time where God said, they have followed you for the last time. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to. 
but somebody need to hear today they have resisted you fought you talked about you and defeated you for the last time it's over somebody say it's over they can't do nothing now it's over God will bring you into your own place Ooh, I feel a shout coming on me right there he'll bring you into your own place somebody say I got my own place high five your neighbor say I got my own place and the Lord appeared to him the, the, the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. Y'all better get that right there. God says, you don't have to be afraid of anything else anybody does to you. God says, I'm with you and I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servants, Abraham's sake. God said, I got your back. They talk about you. They're trying to do everything they can. But he said, it's okay. I got your back. Somebody, somebody holler with me. God got your back. So they envied him, they made him leave town, they stopped up his wells, Isaac kept digging wells, but here's what I like about Isaac, every time they did something to Isaac, he kept responding in a godly way. That's not how you have responded. They talked about you, you talked to them back. They cussed you, you cussed them back. You, they sued you, you sued them back. I'm trying to tell you, you can't respond the way the world responds. God's calling you to, to act differently than the way the world acts and responds. Oh, I wish I had somebody who understood what it is I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you, God is wanting to prosper you beyond your ability to even imagine, but it calls for you to respond in the right way. Who am I preaching to today? Who is this word for? That means some of you are gonna have to go back to the people that hurt you and the people you hurt back. Some of you got to go back to those people and apologize and say, I'm sorry for what I did. Oh, the amens got real soft on that point right there. I'm trying to give you the secret of what it takes. Some of you, some of you got to, until you learn the lesson of taking the licking and keep on ticking. They're going to talk about you, let them talk about you. Tell them sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. They can do whatever they want, try to kill you, hurt you, but they can't harm you because Jesus, God said right here, I am with you and I will bless you and multiply you. They can't do you no harm. They can't hurt you. They can't defeat you. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Do y'all hear what I'm, do y'all comprehend what I'm saying? Isaac was in essence saying, if you smack me on one cheek, I'll turn the other cheek. And if you smack me on that, I got two more cheeks I can turn to. Who am I preaching to today? I'm preaching to somebody here today. I want to break off and bind a spirit and a demon that's got you fighting back and cussing back and rebuking back and hating back. I'm trying to tell you to do two things. Number one, I'm trying to tell you to be a sower. Somebody say, be a sower. Make it a lifestyle of sowing. Somebody say a lifestyle of sowing. A lifestyle of giving. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to break you off right there. A, life to, a lifestyle. Every opportunity. Stop being so tight. Look at your neighbor and say, stop being a tight wad. You're stingy. Look at him and say, you're stingy. God can't bless you because you're too tight. You're too stingy. You got a load of sow. If you want God to bless you, if you want God to prosper you, you got to sow. Somebody say, sow! So give, give, and God will give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Be a sower, be a giver. Give back. Can I say something while I'm on this point? I almost forgot. I said it in the earlier service, but I didn't say it to this one. I need to tell y'all that we live in a culture where everybody wants to receive the blessing, but you don't want to sow. I didn't get no amens from this section right here. Uh, we got people who will enjoy the benefits of First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, but won't join. I was one. You was? I'm here now. You here now. You used to be one, but you remember now. Yes, sir. Praise his name. How long did you come before you joined? Two and a half years. Two and a half years! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to spit on you. There's some other people I need to spit on, not you. I need some leeches. I need to, I need to, to, to get in the face of some people who received the benefit of the ministry for years. 
I go in the store and I meet people. My kids' discussion is how long will daddy be in the store before somebody comes up and talks? It's a regular pattern. The people come up, hey, pastor, how you doing? I'm one of, I'm one, I come to your church. You do what service? You come, I come to the 12. What ministry are you in? Well, pastor, I ain't joined yet. <laughs> Where y'all at? Come on, raise your hand. Be honest. Tell the truth. All right. Amen. Tell the truth, Shane. There's a, there's a whole lot more. Y'all are honest people, but a lot of people that just don't tell the truth. But here's the problem. I say to myself, and we got tons of people like this. Why do you come but don't join? Why do you come and receive the benefit of the ministry, but don't put back into the ministry? You lost, baby? Oh, it go, put it up there, up there, okay. Not me, put it up there on that table up there. You're so pretty. Thank you for being a sower. What's your name? Hmm? Raylan Tut. What's your name? Raylan Tut. Raylan Tut, how old are you, baby? Five? You, five days, five months, five years. Five and a half, okay. <laughs> you so pretty. Did you get that beauty from your mommy or your daddy? From both? You so smart. <laughs> That's a smart girl right there. She said both. That's the right answer. I was making a profound point. What was I talking about? Membership. I'm glad somebody's listening to me. None of them over there knew what I was talking about. You're, you're, you're receiving the benefit, but you're not giving back. And I, I asked myself, why, how, why is it? And I asked people, why, why haven't you joined? Why haven't you made a commitment? And I, they don't, all of them said they don't know, but I figured out what it is. I figured out the reason they don't join is because they know to join means they're making a commitment to give back. And this generation wants to receive without the responsibility of giving back. That's why a lot of marriages don't work, because you want to get, but you don't want to give back. Oh, that was hot right there. That was, that was God right there. That was the Holy, that was the Holy Ghost right there. Y'all hear that? That was, that was sizzling right there. If you want to reap, you got to sow. And you have to stop letting obstacles in life slow you down. Some of you have quit things in life because you, you encountered difficulty. And my assignment is to tell you, you cannot reap and you cannot have the favor of God until you learn to overcome the challenges. It is a way of life. Some people quit church. They quit church because somebody made them mad at church. You don't quit church because somebody made you mad at church. You don't quit going to the grocery store because somebody in the grocery store made you mad. You don't stop going to the bank when you need to get some money because somebody pissed you off at the bank. Go on and preach, Pastor. I'm preaching. I'm doing the best that I can. You don't let what people say stop you from doing what it is that you have a responsibility to do. The Cowboys ain't going to stop being a football team because the Redskins put them to the bottom of the barrel because they didn't win it. They're going to come back next year. Next year. Next year they're going to try. They're going to try the year after they've been trying next for. Year. They've been trying for the last, what? They ain't been to the playoffs in what? 10 oh, years? 15? 10 years? Still got more rings, though, than this year. It's been 10 years, Five. but they're coming back next year. Come on, y'all. They didn't quit. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And I quit the Redskins. I quit them because they kept losing. <laughs> but they kept with it. They stuck with it. But they're at the top of their division now. Can I get an amen from somebody? I still ain't coming back to them yet. I ain't back there yet. But they keep trying. Don't let what people do stop you from becoming and doing what it is God called you to do. Don't let people determine your destiny. They talked about Jesus. Yes, beat him with a whip. Beat, beat him with a whip with metal chips in it. They crucified him. 
hallelujah and he died but he didn't stop he didn't let them stop hey man they buried him but early on Sunday morning he got up out of the grave that's why I serve him and not Mohammed. That's why I serve him and not Buddha. That's why I serve him and not Confucius. That's why I serve him and not Harry Krishna. Because early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. I wish I had an amen from somebody up in here. Woo! I get excited when I think about what Jesus did for me. He did not let their rejection of him stop him from doing what God called him to do. You got to learn to overcome the obstacles in life and you're going to have them. It is a way of life. People are going to talk about you, be jealous of you, reject you, but keep on pressing on the way. <laughs> Amen. I'm finished. I'm done. Did y'all get those two points? What was number one? What's number two? Father, in Jesus' name, embed these truths in the hearts of your people. Help them to get it. Help them to understand it. I pray now in Jesus' name that you help people understand to be a regular sower and to never let the obstacles in life stop them from, from, from fulfilling the assignment that you've laid on their, in their lives. Father, I pray now that you draw somebody who needs salvation, somebody who needs restoration, somebody, God, who needs assurance, and somebody who needs a church plant, needs to be planted in a church. Draw them now in Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen, 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 and amen. Give the Lord a shout if you don't mind. Do me a favor and talk to, start talking to the person next to you and ask them, are you saved? Are you walking with God? Do you need to rededicate yourself? Are you sure of your eternal destiny? So if you're not, tell them, come on, let's get it right with God. While the blood is running warm in your veins, get on up and make your way down here. Unsaved, backslidden, unsure. We're going to give the Lord a shout the moment you start coming. Amen. That's right. Come on, I see you. This is the day. Don't give up on